Hi everyone and welcome to the first session of the day of Arab Oil and Gas Academy internship program. My name is Nihal Munir and I'll be your moderator for the day. As always, please keep your questions in the Q&A part of Zoom and on uh, YouTube Live. Also keep the questions only related to the technical content of the presentation. Any administrative questions, please keep those to the Facebook group. And um, don't worry about the attendance. As always, we are recording everything. So uh, we have a very exciting lecture for today. Um, and let me introduce our speaker. Our speaker for the day is Engineer Ahmad Mansour. Uh, engineer Ahmad is a drilling and cement engineer at BG Services in uh, Premium Bays in USA. He is also a PhD candidate in Texas Tech University, Petroleum Engineering. Uh, he graduated from Texas Tech with master's degree and a bachelor's degree from the University of Shuraboli in Petroleum Engineering major. Uh, engineer Ahmad, thank you so much for joining us today and over to you. Thank you, Nihal, for the introduction. Uh... Good morning or good afternoon for everyone. And uh, thank you for giving me the chance to uh, participate in this great program to share my knowledge and experience with the future petroleum engineer in the Middle East. So my presentation today is gonna be about uh, introduction to well cementing. In this presentation, I'm gonna go I'm gonna cover like the basic uh, fundamental uh, knowledge about the cement. Uh, I will start first with the outline, uh, which is the introduction. I will give an introduction about the cement, why we bump cement. And then I'm gonna move on to the primary uh, cement job, which is the uh, conductor, surface, intermediate, and production. And then I'm gonna move on to the casing equipment. What kind of uh, equipment that we need to be familiar with for a uh, cement job. And then I'm gonna move on to the semen job process, how we um, do a semen job, and then uh, what kind of uh, semen lab testing we uh, run at the lab, which is one of the most important topic in semen. And after that, I'm gonna move on to the semen additive, why we need to add chemical additive to the semen and how this is gonna affect you know, on the property of the semen. And then I'm gonna end up my presentation with the bulk plant where we blend the cement and cement surface equipment, what kind of cement we expect to see at the location. So for introduction, why we do cement? This is a good question. Why we bother ourselves and bump cement between the casing and between the formation? Why we don't just run the casing and start producing? Uh, as uh, some of you know, or all of you know, that whenever we start drilling, uh, we encounter at the shallow depth fresh water. And then we encounter shale formation, and sometimes, or, or all the time, we encounter the oil zone, and then sometimes salt water or the aquifer. By bombing the cement, we're going to be able to uh, isolate uh, the, the salt water from contaminate or to contact with the fresh water as well we're gonna be able to prevent any contamination between the oil zone and the fresh water. So bore or non-existing cement could allow salt water oil to travel along the casing and contaminating the fresh water bearing formation. So here's some of the purpose of bombing cement in oil well. As I mentioned, the previous slide provides zonal isolation to prevent any contamination for fresh water in the area or any connection or contact between uh, different zone in the well. Another thing to provide the uh, uh, axle load for casing uh, as well to protect the casing from corrosion. Uh, whenever we bump the cement, uh, we're gonna be able to isolate the casing from contact with any kind of fluid in the formation. This will prevent any corrosion in the future. Another thing is support the borehole. If you are dealing with unconsolidated formation, a band well, after a certain time of uh, production, some operator company, they decide to shut down the well because it's not economic anymore. So uh, they, what they do to abandon the well, they bomb cement inside the casing uh, in different depth and different volume. And after that, they uh, shut down the well. Well repair, if we have a problem, for example, if we have corrosion in the casing, one of the way to fix the corrosion, it's doing a squeeze job. I'm gonna cover it later a little bit about it. Uh, 
So uh, what is the zonal isolation? According to Eric Nelson in his well cementing second edition book, he mentioned that a durable hydraulic cell in the well bore that allows liquid fluid production from subsurface formations and prevent leak into other formation or to the surface. In other words, it's allow us to produce from certain depth at the certain zone and as well to prevent uh, having like uh, liquid of the formation to reach the surface. This is a video show uh, a bad semen job. As you can see here, at the top of the well, we see uh, water and we see bubble. That indication that we had seen a bad semen job and there is communication between the bottom uh, zone of water aquifer and the surface. And uh, we don't like to see this because this is could lead to uh, environmental problem. Uh, another thing uh, about uh, bad semen job, uh, as we all know about the water horizon in Gulf of Mexico, one of the result of this uh, um, disaster is the semen did not set. So uh, uh, since the semen did not set, we uh, accept the uh, cake or blow out, and this has lead to one of the most uh, crises in the oil industry, which is the Gulf of Mexico. So one mistaken cement could lead to this uh, crisis. So now let's move on to the second topic, which is the primary cementing. Uh, in the primary cementing here, I'm gonna cover the conductor, uh, cement job, surface, intermediate, and production. About drilling liner and production liner, um, I'm not gonna go through it, and uh, multi-stage, I will cover a little bit later. So conductor casing, conductor casing, uh, usually it's from uh, 40 feet to 1500 feet. Uh, the average um, uh, depth for the conductor casing is around 200 feet. Uh, the size from 20 to 36. The main purpose of doing conductor cement is to prevent any washout under the rig. Sometime when we start drilling without conductor, the rig could collapse or there is washout under uh, the rig and this will be the problem. So that's why we do a uh, conductor and do cement for the conductor. Uh, usually we use like less C cement without any chemical additive. So it's a cheap cement job. Uh, another type of cement job is surface cement job, uh, usually from 100 to 1500. Uh, the surface casing usually from 100 feet to 5,500 feet deep. Uh, the size from 758 to 20 inch. Uh, uh, the average size that I deal with usually 1338. Um, why we do cement uh, for surface casing? Uh, it's to protect fresh water sand. It's very important uh, for a surface job to uh, have cement reach to the surface and isolate the whole area or zone of the fresh water because if we don't do this, we might end up with contamination for fresh water that we drink in, in the area that we drill the well at. Uh, as well to provide the place to mount the BOB uh, to, uh, 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 to support unconsolidated formation and for uh, lost circulation zone to sell it. And um, I see now recently we start doing uh, offline cement job. Uh, this is a good topic that you should be familiar with, which uh, we bump cement without having drag on the well. So uh, in the United States now they have like um, a well bed that has five wells. The rig is gonna start drilling the surface string for first well, and then they're gonna skid to the second well. And after that, the cement crew is gonna come over and bump the first well surface string without having rig on the top of the well. And it's go like that. After that, the rig gonna move to the well number three and the uh, cement crew is gonna go to well number two and bump the cement. By doing that, we're gonna save a lot of uh, rig time, which around 10 hours of rig time. So we are talking about around $25,000 per well. So this is a, a simple video show how we drill for those who are not like uh, familiar with the drilling and cement process. As you can see here, we have a conductor. Now we're drilling the surface. And uh, after we drill, we trip out and now we're running the casing. And here we have the mud drilling. And here we bump the spacer and this is the bottom plug, and then we bumping the cement. 
we bump maximum from inside of the casing to the annulus. And after that, we follow with the same in, with the top block. And then we start the displacement. Here we displace the old cement inside the casing toward the annulus. This is for surface casing. Now uh, let's move on to the intermediate. Intermediate, it's, uh, it's a string uh, that uh, has average size from 658 to 20 inch. 958 is the most common uh, size that we use. The depth is from 4,000 to 16,000 feet. So we're dealing with high temperature pressure area. Uh, why we do cement for intermediate? Uh, for many reasons. For example, if you have salt zone area, you need to have cement so you prevent any corrosion in future for the casing. If you're dealing with high pressure zone, you would like to isolate that uh, zone with the cement. If you have lost circulation zone, you're gonna bump cement to isolate that lost circulation zone as well to support the uh, later casing string, which is the production. Here it show how we uh, drill the intermediate. After we drill the surface, as you can see here, we start drilling inside the casing, surface casing, uh, and drill out uh, inside the cement as well. And then after we finish drilling the open hole section, we trip out the drill string and we're running the casing. It's similar to the previous, uh, to the surface uh, cement job. And then we bump the spacer. After that, we drop the bottom plug and then bumping the cement. And after that, we bump the top plug and start displacement, as you can see here. Um, the last uh, casing type that I'm gonna cover here is the production casing. We call it critical job because one mistake is gonna uh, cause a lot of uh, issue. Uh, usually the depth for uh, the production job from 1700 to 20,000 feet and uh, the maximum depth that I, I work with is 23,000 feet. Uh, the average size from five and a half inch to five and a half and sometimes seven inch. Uh, I didn't see 20 inch before. Uh, the purpose, the main purpose of the cement and production job to complete the well for fracking in future, to provide pressure control for the production zone and uh, to well control when perforating. So now let's move on to the third topic, which is the terminology or cement equipment, uh, equipment uh, that we need to familiar with. Uh, here, I'm gonna cover only those who related to cement. Um, I'm gonna cover the plug drop, uh, the plug, top plug and bottom plug later, cement manifold, I have another slide for it. So here I will start with flat color. The flat color here, it's uh, a valve that allows cement to go through it. Uh, it's one way valve to allow the cement and not uh, allow cement to return inside the casing after we bump it. We have another uh, uh, plot shoe here. It's also to allow the cement to go through it and not going back inside the casing. And uh, usually we use the flat shoe as well to guide the casing inside the, the, the well. Uh, we have guide shoe. Uh, it's also to guide the casing inside the well. The difference between guide shoe and flat shoe. The flat shoe has a valve. The guide shoe doesn't have a valve. We have centralizer. Uh, the main purpose of centralizer to set the casing in the center of the well. Uh, so we have a uniform cement around the, the casing. It's very important to have centralizer. Um, scratches, scratches here we use it to uh, remove and de clean the well bore. By using scratcher, we're gonna get rid of all the mud cakes. So whenever we start pumping the cement, we're gonna have good bounding between the cement and the formation. Cement basket, uh, it's option, not necessary. Uh, we use it to support the cement. So whenever we start pumping the cement in the annulus, the cement basket's gonna help us to reduce the hydrostatic pressure. Um, I believe that's all for cement ter uh, terminology number one. So now let's move on to cement terminology number two. Uh, I believe you are familiar with the mud, which is the drilling mud that we use to drill. Spacer, 
uh, spacer, it uh, depends. Sometimes we use fresh water and sometimes chemical spacer. The main purpose of the spacer is to prevent any uh, contact between the mud, drilling mud, and between the semen. Because if we have any contamination between the, the mud and the, the semen, we might end up with changing the property of the semen. Uh, lead slurry and tail slurry. Usually whenever we do semen job, we have something called lead and something called tail. The lead is gonna cover the up part of the, uh, of the annulus. The tail is gonna cover the bottom part of the annulus. Usually the tail has higher density than the lead. You may ask why we're using lead and tail uh, for many reasons. The first reason, uh, since, uh, since the lead has less density than the tail, so this is gonna reduce the cost of the semen job. Another thing, uh, to reduce the hydrostatic pressure. If I'm gonna use the tail for the whole whale, the hydrostatic pressure is gonna be too high. So that's why we introduce lead slurry with less density. So we're gonna end up with less hydrostatic pressure. By reducing the hydrostatic pressure, we not get a uh, frag deformation. Uh, displacement of fluid, it's the fluid that we use to displace the semen from the inside of the casing toward the annulus. Flood car already mentioned. Uh, Flood shoe and get you already talk about it. Uh, shoe track. Shoe track is the area between the flood color and flood shoe or the guide shoe. So here uh, I'm going to talk about the guide shoe. The guide shoe, as you see here, this is the guide shoe. It's run on the bottom of the casing, used to guide uh, the casing into the hole. Um, usually it has hole in the center, allow uh, the fluid to move in it and no valve uh, device in it. So this is one of the questions in the quiz, so make sure to understand what the difference between the flawed shoe and the flawed color. And uh, here the flawed shoe, as you can see here, the flawed shoe, it's similar to the guide shoe, but it has valve here. It's one-way valve, allowed the semen to go in it, but not return. Um, we have flood color. Flood color is a valve that we set uh, one or two joints above the uh, flood shoe or the guide shoe. It's a valve to, that allows the semen to go through it in one way and not allow semen to return to the casing. And the shoe track or what's called a shoe joint is the area between the shoe uh, and the color usually from 40 to 80 feet, and sometimes it's different uh, based in the design that uh, the company or the operator company use. Uh, centralizer, uh, as I mentioned, centralizer is very important uh, for, uh, for semen job. As you can see here, this is a result of semen job that we did not use centralizer. You can see here we have cement in this area, but we don't have cement at the bottom here because the casing has not uh, been set at the center of the, of the hole. Uh, as a result of that, we don't have uniform or uh, cement around the casing. And this could lead to serious problems, especially when you're gonna start doing a frag job because you might lose your frag uh, liquid in this area. Uh, cement blog, uh, we have two types of cement blog. We have top blog, which is the black one. We have the bottom blog, which is the red one. Uh, the top block, uh, it has no hollow, it's uh, solid. The bottom block has hollow, it's empty. And the high pressure, it's gonna open up and allow semen to go through it. So we use the bottom block to uh, prevent any contamination between the cement and spacer and cement and the mud. And we use the top block to prevent any contamination between uh, the displacement of fluid and the cement. So by using those two blocks, we uh, make sure that our cement is not gonna change, the property of our cement is not gonna change as a result of any contamination with other uh, liquid in the formation or in the casing. Um, cement head, uh, as you can see here, uh, we have the cement head where we uh, keep the block in it. This cement head is connected to the casing after we run the casing and we bump the cement through uh, the casing and we bump the plug as well through uh, uh, the cement head. This is the main fold. As you can see here, we have here three valve. It's allow us to control where we should bump the cement. Do we need to bump it to, from this valve or the middle uh, or the upper based on what plug you're gonna bump. 
we have two type of or two type of casing uh, for of uh, cement head. One of them is high pressure, the other one is low pressure. High pressure can sustain till like 15,000 BSI. Low pressure can sustain till 10,000 BSI. We always, we need to make sure before we go to the location that the cement head that we're gonna take with us uh, is gonna be able to uh, sustain or higher than the job pressure that we're gonna anticipate in the location. Now let's move on to the cement job process. Here, I'm gonna talk in details uh, how, what, how we bomb the cement. What is the process exactly? As you can see here at uh, the first uh, step of the cement job, it's mud circulation by rig pump. So if you are a cement engineer and you want to the location there, and uh, the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna uh, go to the company man uh, uh, trailer and talk with him. And you're gonna ask him what's the status of the rig. And he said, probably we are conditioning the well. What, I, what, he, what does mean by conditioning the well? That's mean he's circulating the mud from inside of the casing to the annulus, as you can, as you will see here. So now we bumping uh, or circulating the mud from the inside of the casing to the annulus. We do this, uh, it's kind of rule of thumb, one and a half annulus capacity. Why we do that? Why we need to run the mud uh, or condition the well with the mud before we do semen job? For many reasons, the first one, which is the most important thing, is to keep the well in dynamic mood, not static. Because uh, if we keep the well at static mode, the mud could like uh, uh, change from liquid phase to jelly phase, uh, you know, jelly. So it's gonna be very hard for us whenever we start pumping the semen to displace the mud. So that's why we need to keep it like circulating. Uh, another thing, we need to clean up the annulus here. Uh, as a result of the draining, Um, hello, Ahmed. Do, do we lost the connection? Uh, oh no. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I hear you. Okay, great. So please uh, share, so share, share your uh, screen again back. Okay. Hmm. Just go to uh, share screens, uh, green button at the bottom. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. Okay, one second. If you see you only, but. Let me use your link again. No, just just wait, just wait. I I can um, withdraw you as a co-host, and I will turn you back as a as a. Um, you can check if this work or not. I don't know what happened exactly. You are the host now. Now you are a host. Okay. Try to share. Do you still have it or not? No, I don't see it. I, I don't have the option to share anything. Dr. Ahmed? Yes, I hear you. 
So what's going on? Okay, I don't know what is the problem. So um. Uh, Okay, can you return me back to be the host? Because now you are the host, right? You, you still don't see the share screen button? I don't see anything, I see you, only you. Okay, so let, let me um, disconnect and return back to you. And, and you know, and connect again and start the meeting from the beginning. It's weird. Ahmad, now you are back, right? Okay. Dr. Ahmad, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. So, okay. Share screen. What is the screen share? I cannot uh, share my screen. It's saying host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, one second, please. Okay, now you are a co-host, so you, now you can share your screen back again. Okay. You can just, you can continue. You can just continue from where you start. Yeah. So uh, after we uh, condition the well, we do pressure testing. Uh, the pressure testing here, we uh, we make sure uh, after we rig up, what I mean by rig up, that we uh, install all our equipment in location, which is from pump and uh, uh, cement uh, equipment, bulk truck, field bins, and uh, iron, and the cement head. We apply high pressure, around 10,000, 5,000, depending on what kind of job we are covering. And uh, if we see, for example, if you can see here, you can see here, this is the gauge of the pressure. We apply pressure. If no uh, decrease in the pressure, that's mean we don't have any leakage in our equipment. You can see here high pressure and no leakage or decrease in the pressure. That's indicate that we are good to start our semen and we don't have any leakage in our uh, iron. After that, we uh, bomb a spacer ahead of semen. Uh, we have different type of spacer. We have fresh water spacer and chemical spacer. Usually we keep, uh, we use like a chemical spacer whenever we have a production job or critical job where the spacer allow us to, uh, to clean up the well uh, board diagram before we bomb the semen. But for surface and intermediate, usually we bomb fresh water. So after we bomb the spacer, we uh, drop the bottom plug. The bottom plug here, as you can see, this is the bottom plug. Uh, the bottom plug is used to prevent any uh, contact or contamination between the mud spacer and the cement. We need always to keep the cement without uh, any kind of contamination because this is gonna affect in the cement property. And after that, we start mixing the cement. As you can see here, here's the process of mixing the cement. Uh, this is uh, the dry cement that we're gonna get from the bulk truck or field bins. And uh, here the source of the water that we're gonna get from the location. You can see here now we're gonna get the water. And after that, dry cement from here. And we start mixing the water with the dry cement and circulating inside the bomb. 
till we reach the prospective density of the cement. And here we have cement mixed at the prospective density at the mixing tub inside the pump. And after that, we start pumping the cement. So uh, bumping the lead slurry. As I mentioned, we have two types of cement, lead and tail. The lead has a lower density compared with the tail. Lead is gonna cover the upper part of the wheel. The tail is gonna cover the bottom part of the wheel. This is the lead. After we finish uh, mixing the lead, we move on to the tail. We start mixing the tail. As you can see here, the tail slurry is a higher density slurry for covering the shoe. So this is the tail, this is the lead, and this is the spacer. And after that, we drop the top lug, which is this one. So we open up the valve for the top lug. And after we finish, open up the valve to the drop, uh, the, uh, the top lug, we start displacement. So in displacement, uh, mainly we uh, displace the cement from the inside of the casing to the annulus. And we have the top lug to prevent any contamination between the cement and displacement fluid. Uh, the type of displacement fluid, it's the bend. Sometimes we use uh, mud uh, uh, drilling, and sometimes we use fresh water, and sometimes we use brine water. It's the bend in what kind of design that the, the company would like to use. But the majority of time we use fresh water. After that, after we finish displacement, we do something called check return. Check return, what we do exactly, we bleed the pressure uh, from the well uh, cement head, and then we absorb how much of liquid we're gonna return or we're gonna have returned at the surface at the pump. If we receive a lot of liquid, more than three to five ferrule, that's mean we couldn't, uh, that's mean we have mal a malfunction in the flood color. That's mean the valve that we have in the, in the flood color did not uh, suspend cement from going back to the casing. But if we receive three to five barrel only at the surface, that's mean uh, we were able to achieve uh, a successful cement job and the flood color were able to hold the pressure and prevent cement from going back to the casing. This is like, in general, like the, the cement job process and location from, e to, uh, from A to Z. Now let's move on to one of the most important topic, which is the cement lab testing. Uh, in cement, lab testing is very important for us because this is our indication about the semen that we're gonna uh, that we're gonna bomb in location. Uh, so uh, here I'm gonna cover um, certain uh, equipment in uh, in the lab. I'm not gonna gonna cover all the equipment since we don't have that much of time. Uh, the first uh, machine that I'm gonna cover is the mixing machine. Here we mix the semen. We uh, simulate field mixing condition, which uh, this machine is gonna simulate. Uh, the bomb in location when we start bombing the cement. Uh, we are gonna bomb, uh, mix the cement at 4,000 RBM during 15 seconds and then at 12,000 RBM for 35 seconds. Here's the video, uh, it's gonna show how we uh, test the cement exactly. As you can see here, uh, now we are weighting uh, the cement volume in the lab. We're using electronic uh, balance uh this is the water we usually grab the water from the location so we can mimic exactly uh what will happen in the location you can see here the the lab technician he is very precise about the cement volume as well for water volume because even small uh change in the cement volume could lead to a big difference so you can see here now he's not uh, focus in 185, he, he focuses in the decimal here. 
So here looking for 185.15 or 16. After that, we're gonna uh, move the cement and the water after we uh, wait them to the mixing machine where we're gonna mix it for 60 seconds, 15 seconds at the uh, low rate uh, or and 35 seconds and high rate. By the way, this is not normal mixer. Uh, it's the ABI mixer that has been designed by uh, American Petroleum Institute. So you can not use mixer, mixer to do this job. After that, we filtered the semen to make sure to get rid of all the solid if there is any salt exists or something like that. This is how it looks like cement after we mix it. It's homogeneous cement. And then we're gonna move on to the second part of the test. Uh, we have another machine here is conditioning uh, to condition the, the cement. Here we try to mimic the slurry uh, agitation while traveling to the pipe. Uh, as you can see here, this is how the video uh, explain how we do it. In this machine, we try to mimic how the cement is gonna react while we're bombing the cement inside the casing and uh, to the annulus. This machine can mimic the temperature of atmospheric and the temperature of the formation. And after that, we measure the rheology after we mimic uh, around 30 minutes of uh, bombing the cement inside the casing. And by measuring the rheology, you're gonna be able to know the friction pressure. And uh, this is the pressurized mud scale. I believe you're all familiar with it. Uh, we use it to uh, measure the density of the cement in the lab and the in location as well. Uh, Technic time test. Technic time test, it's the most important test in cement lab. Uh, by doing this test, we're gonna be able to estimate the pumpability time. So it's the process to simulate pumping condition in order to determine a length of time before cement become difficult or impossible to bump. So by running this test, we're gonna be able to know how much of time we have before cement set or before cement changing from liquid phase to uh, uh, solid phase. Um, we measure the, the technical test by a machine called consistimeter. The unit is burden unit. Uh, usually, uh, whenever the the curve of the ticking time reaches seventy to one hundred BC, that's the point that we uh, estimate the ticking time. So here's the machine. This is the cylinder we use. We put it or install it inside the the consistent meter. These are the consistent meter. And this is the result of the technique time. As you can see here in X axis, we have the time, uh, hour and minute. And in Y axis, we have temperature, pressure, consistency. So the green curve here is representative the pressure of the formation. The red curve is representative of the temperature of the formation. And the blue curve here is representative the consistency. As you can see at the beginning of the test, the consistency reading is around 11 to 10 BC. So this is giving indication that uh, here still we have liquid semen. As soon as we reach two hours and 30 minutes, the semen is starting or the consistency starts going up, which means the semen is moving from liquid to solid phase. So to estimate the ticking time, we're gonna see the reading at the 70 BC, where it intersect with the curve of the consistency. And then we read uh, the time here. As you can see here, for this particular test, the bomb time or the ticking time, it's around three hours and 20 minutes. So from the result of the test, we can say this. Uh, we have three hours and 20 minutes to bomb the semen. 
if we have job need more than three hours and 20 minutes, that this cement recipe is not good for it. So we have only three hours and 20 minutes before the cement set. So before we bump any cement in any job, uh, an oil well, we need to run this test, whether in the pilot test or cabling test. Pilot test, it's small portion of cement we mix in, in, in the in the in the lab or few blend tests, it's uh, whenever we blend the whole cement volume that we need uh, to uh, deliver to the location, we get a small sample and send it to the lab and run it again and test it to make sure that we have enough bomb time to bomb the cement uh, in the casing. Uh, by the way, this is very important test because if you don't run this test, you might uh, your cement might like sit. Uh, while you're bumping the cement inside the casing. And this way you might um, uh, cost your uh, company and the operator company around $4.5 million. So that's why this is a very important test. And even whenever you go to location, the company man, drilling engineer, they're gonna ask the first thing about this test. So this is a video how we run the test at the lab. As you can see here, after we mix the cement, uh, we uh, put it in the cylinder and you can see here they knocking around the, uh, the cylinder just to get rid of all the air bubbles inside the cylinder because this is going to fit in the test. This is the consistent meter uh, machine. You can see here, we're gonna download uh, our cylinder inside the machine. And after that, we're gonna turn on the motor. As soon as we turn on the motor, the, the cylinder is gonna start rotating. Uh, this movement, it's uh, mimic uh, the condition of uh, bumping cement inside the casing and uh, inside the anode. And this machine is gonna sustain the temperature of the formation or reservoir and the pressure of the reservoir. So we try to mimic the whole condition of bumping cement in location. And then we start programming at the machine there in the laptop. Another test we uh, do, uh, it's the free fluid test. Here we try to see how the cement is gonna react in a static uh, condition, uh, where we mix the cement and good uh, condition in the bottom hole circulation temperature. And then we put it in a cylinder, 250 milligram cylinder and uh, keep it for two hours and then observe if we're gonna have any separation between the water and cement and if we're gonna have any free water at the top. We do it at 90 degree and 45 degree. Uh, usually we prefer not to have any free water because if you're gonna have free water at the top, this could uh, affect in your frag job later where you're gonna have con uh, connection or you have communication between the frags uh, a plug and frack uh, stages. So that's why in the production job, it's very, very important to have zero free uh, fluid test or free water. Uh, another test is a uh, fiscometer here. Uh, the fiscometer here, we uh, measure the rheology of the cement at uh, the atmospheric temperature and the bottom heart circulation temperature. Uh, the main objective of doing that to see if the cement is mixable or not, if you have high reading here, for example, if you have uh, instead of two and three, you have uh, 60 and 70, 
this is giving indication that the cement is not mixable. Uh, another thing, uh, if you have high reading for rheology, that's uh, indication that you might uh, anticipate or have high friction pressure while you're bumping the cement. So the uh, fiscometer here and the rheology result help us to do simulation job for the cement before we bump it. Uh, the last test uh, that I'm going to cover here about cement is going to be compressive uh, strength. And the compressive strength is uh, to determine uh, uh, how long it's going to take the cement to uh, develop strength uh, to support the casing or to start fracking. Uh, so the main concept be uh, behind this machine is to uh, determine by measuring the change in velocity of ultrasonic signal that transmit through the cement. Whenever we have a solid cement, the velocity is going to be high and transit time is going to be low. Whenever we have liquid cement, the velocity is going to be low and transit time is going to be high. So from that concept, we have this chart. You can see here at the beginning of the test, here the green, cu green curve, it's representative of the strength of the cement, and here is the representative of the transit time. At the beginning of the test, we have liquid phase of cement, so the transit time is high. As soon as we, uh, uh, the seam start uh, developing uh, compressive strength, the transit time is go down because the velocity of the signal is uh, fast now. So you may ask why we need this result? Why you need compressive strength to know? For many reasons. For example, uh, to know how long it's gonna take to support the casing, the seam. Another thing, if the drilling engineer here would like to start drilling the next uh, string, he would like to know uh, for how long he should wait to, uh, till the cement uh, develop 500 psi of uh, compressive strength. For example, if it's going to take five hours, the cement to develop 500 psi, that's mean direct they need to wait five hours before they start drilling. Another thing, if they're going to do a fried job, they need to make sure that the cement achieve 2000 psi before they uh, do a fried job. So uh, this is... Uh, important result that uh, you should send to the operator company or to the drilling engineer for every single job of semen. Uh, mud and spacer compatibility test. Here we try to see how the spacer and the mud gonna react whenever they contact to each other. You remember when I mentioned that before we bump semen, we bump spacer to prevent any contamination or contact between the semen and the mud. By doing that, definitely we're going to end up with uh, contamination between the spacer and uh, the mud. So we run the test to see how uh, the contamination is going to affect in our job. As you can see here, we are on 100% of spacer, zero mud, 75 spacer, 25 mud, and uh, goes on. And after that, we see how it's going to react or how the reality is going to be of the mixture. Is, get, is there going to be any mixing problem or not? As you can see here in this picture, this is 50-50 uh, of mud and spacer, and we have here mixing problem. If we have this in the annulus, definitely we're going to plug the well, so we don't want to see this. So that's why we need to do this test before a uh, production job, uh, which is the critical job every time. And these are the rheology reading. It show us if we have any mixing problem. If we have high uh, rheology reading, that's when we're going to end up with uh, uh, a lot of problem while we're bombing the semen. Uh, another rule of thumb that you need always familiar with, uh, by the way, this is one of the questions in the quiz, it's uh, semen density. Semen density always need to be higher or equal to spacer density, and spacer density is, all, uh, is always need to be higher than the mud density. Uh, you may ask why we need to have this. Because after we bomb the cement, okay, and we start static uh, mode in the annulus, we don't want to have a contamination between mud and the, the cement density. As a result of different density, we're gonna, we need to keep the density of the cement higher so we can keep cement in the bottom bar, we, uh, mud density lower so we can keep the mud at the upper part of the casing. So to keep separation between uh, the different fluids. Cement additive, I'm not gonna go in details about cement additive here. Uh, so we have different type of uh, cement. Uh, the majority of time here in the United States, we use plus C and plus H. 
uh, every uh, type of cement has certain criteria and every area in the world they're using different type of cement. But here in the United States, especially in premium basin, we use class C for shallow depth. We use class H for uh, higher depth because class H can uh, uh, be a uh, solvate resistant at high pressure and high temperature. And class C can uh, create or have high uh, strength development at shallow uh, depth. Here we have different type of uh, additive. Uh, as you know, that uh, we cannot bump cement only because if we're gonna bump cement only, this is uh, gonna affect, uh, it's not gonna give us the right property that we're looking for. For example, accelerator. The accelerator here we added to the cement whenever we need to reduce the bump time. For example, the bump time uh, that we're looking for is one hour and the bump time for neat cement or cement only it's uh, three hours and 30 minutes. So by adding the accelerator, we're gonna reduce the bump time to one hour. Retarder, it's help us to extend the bump time. So it's opposite to accelerator. By adding retarder to the cement, uh, we're gonna have enough bump time to displace the cement and set it in the right location in the annulus. And here, another type of uh, additive, for example, free water control, we add it to the cement to prevent the water, free water that I mentioned in the leftist. Uh, we add anti-settling uh, uh, additive. Uh, we have bonding agent. Uh, this is, we use it to uh, improve the bonding between cement and the formation and the uh, casing and the formation. Now let's move on to the bulk plant. Here, the bulk plant is the, the area where we blend the cement. As you can see here, uh, we have a silo where we store our cement. For example, if you have two types of cement, uh, we're gonna keep uh, class C at the first silo, class H at the second silo. If you have any other uh, chemical, for example, clay ash, you're gonna keep it in the third silo. And uh, here is the silo that we use to blend the cement. This is one of the technique that we use to blend the cement, uh, where we, uh, uh, blow down the third of the cement volume, then uh, first half of the additive, then the second third of the cement, then the second half of the additive, and then the third part of the cement. And then we starting uh, the, we start starting blow down the cement from silo to another silo, it's called boxing. We start boxing the cement to just have homogeneous cement with the all additive. And then this is the spacer catcher where we catch a sample for the whole cement while we blow down the cement to the truck that's the, gonna deliver the cement to the location. And uh, let's move on now to the cementing surface equipment. Here I'm gonna talk about different type of cement equipment that we use. As you can see here, this is the bomb that we use to bomb uh, the cement, which is the bomb unit. Here is the displacement tank. And here is the, it's not clear exactly. It's uh, the mixing tub where we mix the cement with the water. And here is the base maker where we use it to bomb the cement from the bomb to downhole. Uh, this is another picture. It shows the displacement tank where we keep the water inside the, the bomb. Here the best uh, base maker, uh, which we use it to uh, bomb the cement to downhole. And uh, here is the mixing tub inside the bomb where we mix the cement with water. This is the bulk truck uh, uh, where we deliver the cement to the location. As you can see here, we use it to deliver the cement to the location. And, and this is the batch mixer where we mix our spacer, the spacer that we want before the cement. Uh, we mix it here if we have a chemical, if we have barite, and if you have surfacting, we all together, we mix it here and then we bump it to the bump unit. This is how it looks like the location of cement uh, uh, fleet uh, or crew uh, in oil rig. You can see here, we have two bump here. Uh, you may ask why we need two bump. Uh, one of the main thing about cement job, we're not supposed to stop bumping at all under any kind of circumstances unless it's safety uh, uh, problem. So if one of the bomb went down, we can go to the backup bomb and continue bombing. So this is kind of safety factor. So we don't stop bombing cement. 
And here is the field, blend, uh, field bins. It's uh, another type uh, of uh, uh, storage unit that we store our cement in location. You can see here we have three buds. Uh, every bud, uh, bud has like cement. And here we have the bulk truck. The bulk truck as well, we deliver to, uh, we use it to deliver cement, but for small volume, for high volume, we use field bins. And if you can see here, there is here pipe. This pipe is connected to the bomb and go directly to the rig where we have cement head in the rig floor. So uh, from the bomb, we bomb the cement through this small pipe uh, to the rig floor, as you can see here. This is another picture for uh, the location of cement job. This is the, the source of the water that uh, we're gonna use to mix the cement. Uh, it's called frac tank. Um, usually whenever we have a cement job, the first thing the cement engineer or cementer supervisor do is to make sure we have enough water as well. He need to do a quality check for the water to make sure that it's meet the requirement that uh, we uh, recommend as the company. And here you can see the supervisor truck and cement engineer truck next to the pump where they absorb and collect the data for the job. This is another picture. This is what I mentioned here about uh, uh, the pipe or the iron that we use to deliver the cement. So this is the bomb. Here the iron is connected to the bomb. We bomb the cement through this iron and this iron is go up to the rig floor and connected to the cement head uh, on the casing. Uh, this is another picture show how it looks like. You can see here's the field bins, and this is the hose that connected the dry cement to the bomb. And here as well, a uh, bulk truck is connected to the uh, bomb unit. And this is the hose that connected. We deliver the dry cement through this hose to the bomb. Uh, here I'm gonna cover the blog cementing very quick, uh, just to be familiar with it. So what is the blog? The blog, it's uh, a certain volume of cement with high density that we bomb in the in the well, whether it's for abandoned well or for web stacking to start kickoff point, or if you have lost circulation uh, zone while you're drilling, you lose all your mud. We uh, bomb the blog, and after the bomb, uh, after we bomb the the blog, after the blog is set, we drill in it. So it has different uh, uh, purpose of the blog, but this is the most common uh, purpose of bombing the blog. Squeeze cement as well. I'm not going to cover it in detail. The squeeze cement, we do it whenever we have uh, a problem with the casing. For example, we have corrosion in the casing. What we do, we uh, bomb the cement through the corrosion to block that area. Sometimes when we do cement job, the primary cement job, we don't reach the top of cement that we would like to have. So in this way, we frack, uh, we perforate the casing and start bombing the cement to the perforation just to increase the top of cement. And uh, that's the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have any question, I will be more than happy to answer all your questions. I'm sorry if I took more time than I'm supposed to do, which is seven minutes more. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. And no, you did not take extra time. You're just on time. Uh, so we have around 100 questions. So I kind of picked out um, probably five questions to ask you. So let me start with the very first one. Uh, can we rely only on solidification time instead of compression test results? to decide when to resume drilling. Can you repeat the question again? Yes, sure. So can we rely only on the solidification time instead of compression test results to decide when to resume dr drilling activity or the drilling? Uh, usually the main uh, uh, way to know when you can resume drilling is the compressive strength. So. Uh, this is like the normal way that we use here in oil and gas industry. So compressive strength is the most reliable way to know when you should uh, continue drilling. So yeah, compressive strength is the main uh, method. That's based on my experience, of course. 
Okay, um, question number two. How can we determine the number of joints in show track in different sizes of CSG to avoid wet show track? Okay. Uh, usually, like, uh, we do like, like one, one joint, joint, two joints, joint, it's and then and, and, uh, you know, you know, break the company kind of uh, problem you had, had or design that you prefer. But, but uh, uh, we do recommend to a, a that's why, why we do a short track. Uh, the Guys, it seems like we are facing a technical problem. The voice is not clear uh, of both uh, engineer Ahmad Mansour and the voice of Nihal. Both uh, are not clear. So we can, um, you know, um, uh, quit the session right now and we can do a second video for questions and answers by engineer Ahmad. Okay, so. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, watching the webinar. And uh, you know, um, uh, we will see you again after one hour for the second webinar of today. Thank you, Engineer Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.